What is going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the DJI Go app, walk through it, explain a little bit what the functions are and how to orient yourself within the app. So first off you have your image menu. It gives you your options for photo and video. You can click through it. You can choose to take multiple photos at a time. You can take a time shot. Uh, you have all your options for still image taking in that menu. Uh, as you go down you can change the image size. You can also change your image format, whether you want to shoot in RAW, or JPEG, or both JPEG and RAW. You can change your white balance. If you don't want to leave it auto, there are custom presets. You can also set a custom Kelvin value. And you can change your style, whether or not you want standard, landscape, soft shooting, or you can make a custom style. And you can change your coloring finally, whether or not you want black and white, artsy, vivid, DJI color. You have all those options for color right in that menu there. And moving on to video, it's basically the exact same menu. You've got your video size, whether or not you want to shoot in 4K, 1080p, 2.7K, 720 even. you got all those options there. Uh, video format, movie or MP4. And you got your international option to shoot in NTSC or PAL. Uh, you've got your white balance still, whether if you don't want to shoot an auto white balance, and your style, just like in photo, and finally you have your color, just like in photo. To the right of these photo video menus, you have a little wrench and that'll give you some more advanced options. You can turn on a histogram to watch as you're filming or taking photos. Uh, you can turn a video caption on. You can put on zebra bars if you want to have an overexposure warning. That's actually fairly helpful. Um, you've got your other options in here. You can turn on a grid, stuff like that. Anti-flicker. And finally, you have the option to format your SD card, so that's pretty important. That's in the wrench menu. So that does it for the menu right above the photo video toggle switch. You can click that to toggle in between your photo and video modes. And that switch also corresponds to the buttons on your remote controller. You have a record button on the left hand side and you have a photo button on the right hand side. And then below it you have your playback menu where you can look through everything that you've shot recently. You can review it right uh, in the app so you don't have to offload first. It's actually pretty helpful you can change the view to grid so you can scroll through and see everything you've done and then below the playback menu you have your manual camera options where you can change the ISO shutter speed and the dial format if you don't want to use the the wheel on the back of the remote control And below that you have your map where you can toggle back and forth between your live map and your footage, your video feed. Uh, so if you want to see where your home position is you can just press on the map or if you want to check out the area you can also pre press on the map. Up top if you click on the safe to fly status bar you'll get your whole aircraft status menu. So in here you'll find your compass which is really important to calibrate that. Um, your sensors, your gimbal status, it'll tell you everything that's going on with the craft. On the top bar you can see your camera settings that you've set and to the left you have your options for auto takeoff which is the little arrow pointing up and return to home. Finally in the upper right hand corner you have those little three dots and that'll give you your general settings and here's where you'll find all the nitty gritty stuff. So measurement units, uh, YouTube live streaming if you're into that, um, showing flight route, etc. So the top one is going to be pertaining to the drone, hence that little drone icon there. Within the drone menu, you also have a couple pretty important options. You can change, you can manually change the flight mode uh, off of positioning to sport or attitude mode in here, rather than doing it on the back of the controller. And if you're a very, very beginner, you might want to check beginner mode. That will restrict the distance that you can fly. The drone will just stop when it reaches the maximum distance and it'll also restrict the speed so it's a little bit easier at first to fly. And below the drone icon we have the sensor menu where you can enable or disable obstacle avoidance, backwards flying, etc. 
and with that little remote symbol you get all your options pertaining to your remote control so you can adjust your gimbal wheel speed how fast the camera goes up and goes down with the gimbal using the wheel on the back of the remote control you can calibrate the remote control you can customize the two buttons on the very back you can set those to different camera settings or different app settings you can look into your aircraft battery status by clicking on the little navigation symbol with the battery next to it you can set advanced battery settings if you want uh, the batteries to just discharge themselves after x amount of days you can fine tune your gimbal settings in the very last uh, icon that looks like a camera with a bar over it. You can, you can fine tune the gimbal tilt and everything like that. And that is pretty much it. As far as this app goes for a very beginner starting out, it's actually pretty straightforward. There's nothing really too complicated unless you want to get into changing the the advanced settings such as the gimbal tilt and whatnot um, for beginners such as myself I'm probably gonna just leave that alone for now um, but all in all the app is pretty pretty streamlined pretty user-friendly it's not really too difficult to find your way around I had no experience with the app and I took it out for my first time and I it, it probably took me 10 minutes to get my bearings in it so just going through the menu like this should give you a good idea of where everything is and where your settings are, where the important settings are, such as your camera functions, your camera uh, capture settings. That's probably the most important, how to format the SD card and calibrate the compass. So hopefully you got something out of this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.